Today we're at Essex, Massachusetts, uh, looking out on the Cox Reservation, which is a, an area that's always packed with painters. It's just a beautiful area of salt marshes leading out to the ocean. Uh, this is a shaded area where we've set up today, and I'm focusing uh, my thoughts on making patterns, using patterns in painting to, to help us uh, through complex and difficult areas. Last week we were at um, Gloucester and we faced a similar challenge with the background. Here we're working more in the midground with patterns. The ones I want you to notice are the patterns overhead in the trees and the dappled sunlight on the ground. Also the patterns of stones and then the distant trees. And by patterns I mean shapes that are repeated shapes that are repeated um, are, are a helpful strategy uh, thinking about the pattern that you'll need to replicate um, for example dappled sunlight or pattern that you'll need for a stone fence or clouds or this sort of thing and a, a pattern basically is a shape that's repeated um, but the trick is to repeat it with a bit of randomness or variety and unfortunately that's a little counter to our uh, standard working method. Human beings are really good at repeating without variety, making marks or designs where we're repeating equal heights, equal distances, equal widths. We do that very easily almost well exactly without thinking but uh, repeating with uh, variety is a little trickier so i've started this painting with a graded wash moving from a cobalt blue to a yellow ochre on the horizon and then as i'm coming down to the lower section of the painting i'm adding a bit of sap green and a little more yellow ochre the idea here is to get a really soft uh, beginning to the painting, a soft transition in the sky. And I did uh, try to shape that uh, sky a little bit, putting a little more blue on the left-hand side, a little more yellow on the right-hand side. As it dries, I think that'll come out a little more. The idea is to get a feeling of light coming from right to left. Now uh, the wash is still wet. I'm adding a, a darker mix using more blue and some of that same sap green to create the pattern of trees in the background. Just blobs, but I'm thinking about spacing, height, trying to get a feeling of variety in these trees. Even though they're probably the same trees, I'm trying to get, get them to look a little different. As I bring these trees forward, they're very much describing the lay of the land, the plains, and uh, they're getting darker as they come forward. So this is basically going to help to create depth in the painting. As this dries, those distant trees will fade a little more. Uh, having soft edges helps that a lot. Uh, as you see at the base of the trees, the paint has started to dry, and I'm getting a, a nice sharp edge. And this helps to make that section come forward and at the same time push the distance even further away. So edges are playing a, a role in this, um, of course, but also the making the size a little bigger as it comes forward and darker as it comes forward. Uh, the pattern of distant trees there. Now I'm working in the stone fence. And yeah, I'm starting off with a very generic shape, long shape as it dries, I'll be adding the pattern of stones into that. I'll be creating the gaps between the stones to use as a pattern. And again, it's a, a repeated shape. If we were painting this stone fence uh, as a larger element, in other words, we're closer to it, I would definitely be using a pattern even more uh, to create the feeling of those random sized stones placed onto each other. Here's another example of a pattern. Look at the long, narrow bands of light green that I'm leaving. They're, they're repeated through uh, as gaps in the, in the dark, shadowed area. And these are another pattern. The shape of that uh, dappled sunlight is what's repeated 
with variety. So some places it's longer, some places it's broken, some places they're connected. And I'm also using at the same time a, a sort of pathway through that dappled sunlight to lead the eye. As this dries, you'll see it becomes more and more clear. And in fact, that same pathway of bright green is going to lead you into the painting. It goes through the fence and it keeps on going all the way to the horizon. Well, the painting above has dried and now I'm going to create the pattern of the leaves overhead, the trees, the foliage, and uh, maybe doing it this way makes it a little clearer how we uh, um, read and then execute a pattern of, of foliage. Um, very much a bulky shape in the beginning and as this shape is refined um, I'm adding smaller leaves to the periphery of the shape. This is where we can read the smaller branches and actually read the size of the leaves that are going into making this bigger shape. You notice I'm using the side of the brush a lot. Uh, this is to help me from help me express the broader shape quickly and actually more accurately. And then as I move to the edge of that shape, I'm using the tip of the brush and getting some small details, some of the individual leaves. And uh, this is working in this fashion. It might seem a bit odd building the foliage first and the trunks later. I think probably you can do it either way. Uh, this way allows me to kind of illustrate a way of thinking about the foliage. If you notice, it's it's being joined with some attention to the holes that we see in the foliage so that we can see through and beyond into the sky. But very much there's a sort of connection to all this foliage. And um, as an illustrative uh, exercise. I think it works to to show it in this way. You could also build this painting by starting with the trunk and adding the foliage into that, but maybe it makes it a little clearer to see it this way. I'm starting with a very bright sienna into the trunk and I'm trying to evoke some dry brush as I create the trunk so that we can feel the light coming from the right hand side and striking parts of the tree. Other parts will be in shadow but striking parts of the tree and giving us a sort of uh, glare or sheen. And again, it kind of reinforced that direction of light that we started in the sky. This will not be the final color of the tree. This is used to kind of, again, create a feeling of um, light striking the tree. This will be followed with a deeper gray or blue uh, when I place the shadows onto different parts, but at this stage it's interesting to note how the limbs are not connected completely. Uh, our habit would be to paint this tree branch to branch, connecting the branches the whole way, but I, I'd like you to see how I'm doing it and then measure that with the final result. Um, what I find is by leaving some areas disconnected or some dry brush, a very light connection, I get a feeling of, I get more feeling of atmosphere and light on the tree. That's my reason for doing it. So now I'm approaching uh, the darker parts of the tree, uh, the shadowed parts of the tree and adding those uh, connections, or I'm sorry, adding those darks at the joints uh, where the tree is turning, it helps to create a bit more form and uh, uh, three-dimensional quality to the tree. It also exaggerates the light that's striking the tree and makes that a little more felt. I'm doing the same for the distant tree with the smaller strokes. And even into the fence, I'm adding some of those divisions into the stones using that same dark. This will probably be the strongest tone that I'm using in the painting. And as you see it being placed, you s you feel that the now the distance is really getting deep in that far, far horizon area. So the darks kind of seal the deal in this case. And I'm trying to be 
sort of minimalistic and not use use too many but uh, definitely using some to um, shape those branches and as a final touch I'll add some splatter up above just to give a, a darker sensation to the a few of those dark leaves up above One of the reasons I was I focused on this motif is I felt the trees really to be alive. The, they had almost a, an animated quality, a quality as if they were dancing in the in the uh, sunlight and in the shadows, and that s struck my imagination as being quite interesting and something that I could focus on and use as sort of a a rhythm in the painting. Uh, landscapes generally present a sort of rhythm that you can use as a means to formulate your composition. Sometimes it's a very flat, peaceful um, presentation, as the salt marsh shows us. But we are a little distant from that in the trees and in the shadows, and I wanted to play up a vertical format and a feeling of light and animation to the trees. So. Uh, it's coming out. It's coming out uh, the way I envisioned it. And I'm kind of adding some final details. This is the, the finished piece. And you can feel the light striking the tree in certain ways. You certainly feel an animation to the branches, the way they twist and turn. And now look at that path of light leading to the bright spot in the fence and pulling you back into the painting. I did a second version of this um, where I exaggerated the thin quality of the trees a little more and varied the spacings. Again, that path of light in the dappled shadow and a nice overhead uh, dappled light in the branches as well.